Hey guys, so today I want to go over this uh, form library that I've been using pretty frequently at my work. It's called Formix. So you guys probably heard of it. You guys have uh, looked into some of the form libraries for React, but it's by far my favorite. And for the most part, for me, it's been a pleasure to use. So this is the website of Formix. And I want to go through with you guys a very seemingly simple yet complicated form. Uh, here's a sign-in form right here, uh, zoomed in. Here's an email input, a password, a submit, and a reset button. So it looks very simple, but there's a few features that uh, I have added here that we'll be going over. So one thing it has is notice that the submit button is disabled right now. Uh, I can't click on it. Uh, and this is because there are a couple of criterias that this form needs to have in order for this submit to be enabled. And that is one, both this field, the email field and the password field has to be, are required. And two, the email must be a valid email. And three, the password must be at least eight characters in length. And another thing about this form is that it has, it shows the errors that you have if certain criteria are not met. So for example, let me begin typing here. <clears throat> Let's say I didn't uh, fulfill the eight character requirements. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I tap away. Notice, oh, right here too. Notice these errors showed up. So here it says password must be at least eight characters. And for the email, it says this field is required. Now, if I type an email here, it says email must be valid. But if I write a valid email, then that error goes away. Likewise here, if I write at least eight passwords in length, the errors goes away. And when I did that, notice it's disabled right now, but when I type in the eight characters, since all three requirements are fulfilled, the submit has become enabled. Uh, this reset button just does the obvious, it resets the form. There's a couple more things that I want you guys to be aware of. Notice when I refresh the page, there is no errors right now, but the error only shows up when I did something when I touch an input and I tab away from it. When I step out of the input, that's when the error show up. So this is for to make the user experience a little bit better. Uh, just imagine having a form and right when you get to that form, imagine all these errors popping up in every single field that you have. So that is not a good user experience. So this is some more functionalities that we have to add to this form. Now, the good thing about Formic is in order to do all this, it doesn't require too many lines of code. So this is my Formic component right here that does all this. It is roughly 50 lines of code uh, and it is relatively straightforward. Now, if I were to do this without using Formic, let's say just using native HTML form elements, uh, it will be a lot longer and a lot more tedious to write this. As, as a matter of fact, one thing I want to do with this series right now is I want to first go uh, try making this without Formic and see how long and tedious that can be. And then after that, I want to show you guys how easy it is to build this with Formic. So I'll see you guys in the next video.